welcome to Soul Listens. We are here today with dear friend Jay Chadagam. And Jay was affiliated with the Brahma Kumaris, with whom we co-produced the event, Peace in the Park, back in the Summer of Love 50th anniversary year, 2017. And now we are here for an update with you, Jay. So as far as I'm, my journey, I feel like you know, it's the time where the first few years was the egg, incubating in the egg, my own med meditation practice, then you know, the cracking of the egg, the chick came out, you know, was still you know, under the um, wings of the mother in the nest. And now the time has come to fly, to go out, to reach out, to spread my wings and um, do as much as I can do to share this message of uh, conscious evolution. And so that's where I guess, you know, our threads connect. So I've uh, been spending a lot of time with children, especially. I, I do all kinds of retreats around the world, but my favorite kind are when I spend time with uh, children and I go different places and I do summer camps and uh, after school programs, weekend programs, etc. And the idea is that I want children to be able to garner these tools to be able to tune into their inner compass because really the master is within. The answers to these evolutionary questions, existential questions are not on Google. And so at this age, I look at the analogy I use is that these are like rockets that are getting ready to lift off from Earth. A one degree error on Earth, they will miss their moonshot, whatever that moonshot is for them, by a thousand miles. So if I can help them to teach how to course correct along the way, that is by tuning in, listening and asking themselves, what is important? What does success mean to me? What's my value system? Then I can see that these kids will be a huge val worth value of investment of time as we see them grow and become civil citizens of tomorrow, become our leaders, entrepreneurs, whatever they're here to do to create a beautiful world that we all want to see. Absolutely. And what great training and preparation that you did spending, I mean, 15 years living at the meditation center of Brahma Kumaris and all of that background in the lifestyle and culture and philosophy and again maybe most importantly the breaking down of the programming of society and commerce and the way it wants us to be mm -hmm. and getting quiet mm -hmm. and learning really what our inner nature is and right. it seemed like that was the perfect launching pad to continue Absolutely. the rocket metaphor That's for right. you in your life and so you're just independent guy in the world now? Or, yes, yeah. I'm independent, but you know, these kind of productions like the retreat, I'm going to getting ready to do a six week trip to China where I'll be doing four one week long summer camps for 50 children each and then their parents. So it's a mega production, but I've got, I'm blessed with a beautiful team that I'm working with. There's a team of four people in China right now as we speak. They're working hard, they're working day and night to put together this beautiful mm -hmm. experience where these kids are. First of all, they feel welcome, they feel safe, they feel um, they enjoy themselves. The atmosphere is going to be built up for them to have a real good time. It's also going to be out in nature right by a beautiful lake. And, uh, you know, the transportation and then their parents, because, you know, most of them will come with their parents. They don't want to leave their kids alone. So making sure that the parents are entertained while the kids are in session with me. And then we have some travel, we have some adventure. We have, we're going to go to the Great Wall of China, climb that on one day. Uh, go sp uh, speedboat on the lake one day, you know, so we try to really mix it up and create a, a holistic experience which includes body, so yoga, qigong, um, then uh, of course the meditation, the, um, the classes around trying to develop their value, asking them how to explore their value system, but then also the food. We make sure that we have, we're partnering with one of the best vegan restaurant chain in China, uh, Plant Pure Nation, I think you mentioned that earlier, so uh, we're partnering with there. We're just blessed to have them. It's just a, so it's really a fabulous experience mm -hmm. for kids to, at this age when they're you know getting ready to set off into you know uh, into growing up and making the decisions and you know becoming adults. We want them to be able to know what the choices are and what are the consequences of what they choose to do, right? When they choose to live with love, when they choose to live with peace, and so. What are the repercussions of that for themselves, for their families, for their community, which may be in this case the school, and then in the larger world? And what happens when you choose not to, when you try to bypass it, or you're just having a bad day, but you decide you know, you're not going to take the time to center yourself and then just go off and do something? What are the 
consequences of that in all of these four areas. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a beautiful experience and I've done this before and I'm just looking forward to this again. Wonderful. We have, with our soul project, always continued to ask ourselves, who is our audience? Who are we speaking to? And we've always said, everyone, we're speaking to you. We're speaking to anyone who will listen because we're all here together to begin with anyway. And we're mostly all under the influence of a, a, a condition. We're all conditioned to do something. Our brains were blank when we were born. So we're conditioned to do something. But uh, so many of us in the world are under the influence of this consumerism, you know, economic environment. Mm -hmm. And so it's about we all need to transcend that to find our true nature and find our potential right. in this world. And you bring up a very interesting subject, a demographic, which is children, mm -hmm. our youth, the younger people, the, our future, right. future leaders. So, I mean, I'd like to just hear from you since that's where you're so passionately involved is, yeah, why? Why, why, do we, why is it so important to get this message to the youth? So, first of all, I think this message is good for anybody. But like I used in my previous analogy, the rocket, <laughs> I look at this as like, if I had a certain amount of time, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, I don't know how much time I've got left in me, but let's just say some final amount of time. I'm asking myself this question, where is my greatest ROI? Return right? on investment. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, everything's cost So, you know, so these kids are like rockets that are getting ready to launch here. And there are these adults that, you know, are more, I guess, a better lucrative business for me if I'm looking from a, from, you know, from a financial return. Right. But those rockets are already out there in space, lost. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, so they've got 10, maybe 15, 20, 30, whatever that, right? But then if I look at real need, first of all, I mean, these, the kids, you talk about neuroplasticity, the kids are in that place in their life where their brains are still being formed. They're, all of our brains are being still rewired, but they're still very malleable, very, um, you know, uh, influence, we can influence them. And then I try to tell them not what their value system should be, but I teach them skills, how to determine that for themselves. Asking themselves, because like I said, everybody's moonshot is different. And so you following a recipe, you following your parents or whatever that, that system is that you're growing up in may not be your moonshot, may not be your destiny, but how do you find that for yourself? So in, so both from a term of ROI and also the ability to, to influence somebody at a time when I think they're most open and vulnerable to it. And I think that, you know, I give them the skills and say, decide that for yourself. And so much of that time that some of us have wasted in making choices and then regretting it because we just didn't know we didn't have the tools to realize what would be the most meaningful and fulfilling. This here is the important thing. Strive for fulfillment rather than achievement. So you asked about, you mentioned a thing a little while ago where you talked about in this consumer-based society. And what's happening here, people are trying to fill their void with stuff. Well, we're not stuff. We're not a thing. And it's just simple logic that Physical stuff cannot fill a spiritual void. So here, can we, even before these kids get into that rat race, going mm -hmm. after that, that, that next fix, can I help them to question and ask, what is it that their sense of success? Mm -hmm. What brings them true happiness? Mm -hmm. And can they pursue that? Imagine if all of us lived with a life committed to what we really believe in, what we really love to do, may not be most the financially viable thing, but it'll be a, a universe, a world that will be lit up. Mm. Passionate people that are focused and they're, they're in itself from the, from the fulfillment that they get. No drugs, no need for substance abuse and no suicides and depression and all that stuff that we see going off the charts right now. So. 
So what are the core that can you identify, like the bullet point core, either values or the tools or steps that yeah. they can achieve what you're teaching yeah, them? Yeah, so interesting the question. <laughs> yeah, it's a curriculum. Yeah, so actually, so, so I want to talk a little bit about the curriculum. And I'm very honored to be a student of one of the greatest teacher who's put together this, something called Living Value Education. Let me talk about for a second about how this came about. In 1996, the United Nations um, International Children's Education Fund, UNICEF, sought out 20 teachers from around the world, some of the best educators from around the world, and asked them to come together and if they could research what were the values that are needed to sustain humanity on this earth. Mm. So these teachers went away, and I think they researched, I think, 120 countries, and came back, and they all put their information together, and they came up with 12 values, Okay. right? And from the 12 values, Diane Tillman, who's my teacher, she lives down in Seal Beach, California, educator all her life. So she wrote this Living Value Education series, starting from toddlers, uh, from uh, kindergarten children, to all the way to young adults. And then, of course, now parenting. She's written a bunch of beautiful books for mindful parenting as well. About these values, exploring them with exercises, with uh, storytelling, uh, with interactive um, 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 games, uh, songs, music, all of you integrating of like a multidisciplinary thing. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so I found out about this, and as I was being, I've been a teacher for meditation for 15 years now, but when I started, when I noticed in, I think 2015, there was an article in the Atlantic Magazine that uh, showed that San Francisco Bay Area is the nation's capital in youth suicides. I was, my stomach turned. I said, you know, I've been doing this work, my life is committed to conscious evolution, somehow I just missed working with the kids. I never thought about that. And when I went down to Palo Alto, which was, by the way, that was the epicenter of that pandemic, I had researched, I talked to the supervisors of the school district, I talked to parents who lost their kids, I talked to school teachers, uh, I talked to pediatricians. on the tracks down That's right, that's I right. Yeah, now. so gun, sc gun school district, gun high school, yeah, gun high school yeah. exactly. So when I came back from talking to these people, I found out that these were all things that could be addressed. And if I can recall, it was now, it's been a couple, it's been four years since I've done that research. The five things that really stood out for these, why these kids were throwing away their life. Number one, they were getting pressure to get into programs, into schools, um, Ivy League schools primarily because they were these highly competitive, Competition. highly successful Strikes community again. of people there. So into getting into these really, really high-end schools, Second, they were being pushed into programs to become doctors, lawyers, engineers, etc., which was not aligned with who they were. They were trying to be artists or teachers or whatever else that they wanted to be, but just the peer pressure, the home pressure, etc. Number two. Number three, I call it burning the candle at both ends. They were not only getting up earlier, working harder, and coming home tired, but because of the gadgets, like all kids do these days, I mean, they're you know, watching TV, playing with video games, Snapchatting with friends, whatever they're doing on the devices, that the light from those devices just kept their brains wired quite late into the night. And so they were not getting enough sleep. So I call this burning the candle at both ends. Number four is that they did not have a community of people. Like typically, whenever there's extreme pressure, what happens is people go and branch off and create a counterculture. There wasn't a counterculture in this Silicon Valley, in this madness to go create that next IPO you know, invent that next new app, etc. So these kids didn't know where to find their tribe if they didn't want to be in that rat mm -hmm. race. So all of this, when I came back and I looked at this, it's like kids shouldn't, with this amount of privilege. I mean, these were, these yeah. were good kids. Yeah. These were bright kids who were throwing away their life. I said, you know, something can be done about it. So I started putting together retreats and workshops. And then I realized that I need to train myself in a formal system like you just asked me about you know what is the system that the I saw. curriculum I curriculum yeah. exactly right so then i went down to um this teacher i reached out to uh, diane tillman who has been working with living values for the last 20 years and very blessed that i was able to uh, take a number of uh, teacher training classes from her and somehow the chinese people have seen that and they've book me every year so I was I just finished a silence retreat yesterday yeah. as I was mentioning to you and uh, at the end of it they said okay it's great that you're working with us old farts can you work with our children 
And I'm like, you know, you are telling me now it's the month of April. I've been booked in February for my entire summer. I'm doing four summer camps, as I just mentioned. So somehow this has hit off with China. And, and here's the thing about, you know, when I mentioned China, you know, I'm so Indian body living in America and Chinese people are booking me out in the summers for their kids. And it goes to show that we're all really the same species. Mm. We all want the same thing. So there's 12 values that UNICEF, you know, that, that program came back with recommendations. It's universal. It does not like, you know, something different in Africa or China or India or Europe or any such. So I'm just grateful that, you know, I'm being um, fully utilized. And, um, and I, I, one of the things, by the way, I should add to this is that as parents are watching this, as teachers are watching this, one of the key things that I need you to understand is that 80% of what our children learn doesn't come from what we speak to them. Mm -hmm. It comes from what they see. They are mirroring you, parents, teachers. Mm -hmm. So please, just as much as this is important that we are doing these children programs, I encourage parents to get involved in these education of living values. I also encourage teachers to embody this because you people are going to be upfront with them. They watch you six, eight, ten hours a day. So no better way of embodying this or, or education, educating our children than the parents and teachers embodying it themselves. So the way I, I, I look at it is that if you see a flower wilting in a vase or in a flower pot, don't blame the flower. Ask the soil how that needs to be changed. So the parents and the teachers role in our education system, in our value system, in conscious evolution is very, very important. Well, as Jacques Fresco showed us so many ways, environment shapes our behavior. You know, I think as E.O. Wilson showed us, we uh, in sociobiology, we are wired to care. We are an ultra social creature. We live in societies together, but um, Losing my train of thought here. Oh, thank you. Environment shapes the behavior. So this is a matter of we are predestined to, to we're wired to love and wired to care, and yet we have this environment that teach us, teaches us how to do all these things because we say love and care and share, but then we ourselves as parents aren't doing it. And like you said, the children are mocking our behavior. They're they're not. They're, they're mimicking our behavior, I guess. They're not, they're, we say, do as I say, not as I do, and That's they're right. doing as we do, not as we say. Right. And so the environment shapes it very much. So what you're speaking to here is that we want to evolve this environment, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? It's an environmental evolution, a cultural environmental evolution, mm -hmm. so that when kids are raised in it, they emerge different beings right. because they were put in a different environment. That's right. Completely, yeah. completely yeah. agree. So talk about that. Again, this goes back to my analogy of the soil. So the, the seed is going to sprout and embody the values of the soil that it's growing in. And so it's clearly visible if you see about these conscious communities that live in, uh, in Denmark. I don't know if you know about that. Yes. Just the whole For wiring. be happy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there's the whole wiring of the kids yeah. is to to take care of one another, not to accept, not to sort of be an exception, mm -hmm. but say, how do we all rise? Mm -hmm. How can the rising tide float all the boats and not just be the one-off selfish, just, you know, I want to excel, I want to look cool, I want to, you know, brag about this. So completely yeah, agree. I want, it's like the, those kids with the race, mm -hmm. you know, they, they, they all hold hands and get there, so then, then they right. share the prize That's together, right. you know, and um, experiment in the, the E.O. Wilson, documentary on PBS that they produce on their website actually called Of Ants and Men and mm -hmm. there's some wonderful experiments in there and showing how like ch two chimpanzees pulling a half a banana work having to work together they will do it they'll each get the half if they work together to pull the one banana and they're both there whoever's bigger will kick the other one out of the way and eat all the bananas mm -hmm. but the little boys the mm -hmm. humans mm -hmm. they work together to pull it and when they get it then here's your two and here's my two and they share mm -hmm. it that is us. That's us. That's right. That's mm -hmm. us. Yeah, we, he, we, are we are wired, like they say. We're yeah. wired to be gregarious. We're wired to take care of each other. We have come we, this far yeah, we because we to. supported each other. If you look at yeah. the, the evolution and see 
how has this human race, the human the Homo sapiens, far exceeded in terms of its power on this earth today compared to any other species? It is simply because of our collaboration and cooperation. That's what sets us apart. Try to put together 80,000 chimpanzees in a football stadium and try to follow anything. It's, it'll just be nuts, chaos. right? Complete yeah. chaos. So yeah. the fact that the human being can do it talks about the ability, innate ability that we are here to cooperate and work together. And because of how powerful we are and how much influence we have on our environment, we really do have the responsibility to be the custodians of this precious blue ball. And all these chimpanzees and all these other creatures and the ones that are going extinct and the ones that already have, you know, RIP, they're relying on us. That's correct. They're relying on us. And uh, it's, uh, it's great that there are so many people around now, it seems, who are radically rethinking and really looking at problems, not just symptoms and how radical enough solutions that feel like they will really thrust us forward. We've been evolving for a long time and now it seems like we've, we've got a little tripped up. We're, we're not actually evolving, we're kind of stuck. We're, we've been... That's right. And now is our opportunity to kind of dig our way out of that and right. go up and just fly and flourish again mm -hmm. and see where was this meant to go? Where does this have the potential to go? Our humanity, Correct. our... Correct. our our line on the, mm -hmm. uh, our branch, if you will, on That's the right. tree of life. That's right. You know. so, so, so to, to Evan's point, if you wonder where is that dip, and if you're not feeling that dip, I tell you there's one metric that you mm. cannot argue, mm -hmm. which is our environment. Global warming is a metric that scientifically has been proven that we are going down, in Evan's language, this, we're going into the ditch. And we have the responsibility, we have an urgent responsibility to huddle, to come together, to hold hands and work on this solution yeah. as one human race, as one family. Because like you said, this is the only planet that we know. This is the only place that we call home. There's no, nowhere else. There's no there. There's no other. We're all in it together. Yeah. So we're all part of the solution. Yeah, and we just always want to be mindful that the work that we're doing, it's about going deeper. It's about getting beneath, the, again, the symptoms and, and going to root causes, mm -hmm. getting to the heart, figuring out the what am I doing and why in every moment. Why did I say this word and not that word? Why did I choose to do this and not that? Eat this and not that? You know, be with this person or not that or this job or not that. The more we can learn to listen to our hearts and let go of some of that just junk that's been layered over it, impeding our ability to even know who we are ourselves. Right. You know, climate change to me is a symptom. It's not the problem no, at right. all. It's the symptom of our lack of connection, of our lack of sense of tribe, of our lack of, again, Wilson is talking about the fact that we are used social. We need each other on the most profound level of, of you know, among the top most social creatures on earth, the ants and the bees and the termites and us and a few other insects who need each other this deeply and recognize that therefore our biological imperative is that we're wired to care. Mm -hmm. We're wired to work together. We right. are a collaborative species who are completely interdependent upon one another. Mm -hmm. And so just, you know, getting a plug-in car or building a green house that's, I don't think that's the solution to climate change. That'll treat some of the symptoms on the surface, but mm -hmm. my home, my air conditioning in my home isn't what, what, what the, the real significant damage that we're doing. You know, it's big stuff. And it's stuff that maybe we're still all buying and doing or driving a, a gas powered car soon, but a lot of it's industry that's even beyond us anyway. That plug-in car was built with a bunch of petroleum products, right. you know, so, and, and trucked over here and all that. And they're, they're, but look, they're doing work to bring, you know, solar powered roads and electric and uh, semi you know self-driven electric cargo transportation right and i think these can give us a false sense of oh we're going to take care of it they're going right. to trim that down and stop yeah. doing that mm -hmm. and oh they closed one strip mine somewhere or tar sand pit but it's this fundamental to those aren't the problem they are representative of the problem mm -hmm. that we're living in a world that we're not running that mm -hmm. we're not running from the heart a system that's bigger than us and more powerful than us has run away with the kingdom and, and i mean they say the tail's wagging the dog so it's about 
getting a grip on things, getting back to, wait, this is our world. What are we doing? I think is really important. And this is why I think your work, and especially with youth, and rethinking everything we think, and embracing just the concept of consciously evolving our whole thinking, our way of life, our approach, our frame of mind mm -hmm. for everything we take in. It's Correct. a paradigm. Mm -hmm. that uh, That's the most important work. Because right. we want to stop harming our planet. We want to stop harming ourselves. We oh. want to stop seeing our loved ones be sick and die prematurely. Of course we all want that. We are you social. That's right. So these uh, feel to me like heart of the matter stuff, digging deeper, s systemic change from the foundation that will then help us figure out mm -hmm. how to flourish on the surface. That's correct. Yep. Yep. So the work is really the inside work that is going to address I completely agree with you. So whether it is, um, we talked about global climate change, um, poverty, social injustice, uh, terrorism, etc. These are all symptomatic. So they are, all, they are part of something when the core is hungry and, and it's, it's devoid of its nourishment. It shows up in these different forms of weaknesses. So I completely agree. In fact, this is one of the things that I, I personally practice, and this is one of the core messages, which is when the soul is content, when the soul is nourished, automatically these symptoms that we are seeing and we you know, hear a lot about in the media and, and we worry about, they will automatically fall off because we are aligning to our core nature, and by that we are aligning with the universal forces, with you know, that higher power, how we want to look at it, and we are living together as one family, and that has been the way throughout history. We just had to learn to get back to that. We've only had our own little domiciles, everyone in their own hovel, mm -hmm. for a very short period right. of time. Yeah. We've been around for a couple hundred thousand years, and we've lived much more communally, much more tribally. Mm -hmm. uh, I know we all value our privacy and, and, and you know fear the gossip and the bad reputation, but really we're intended to live where it's all out there, right. and your reputation is kind of public. That's right. It's who we are. Yeah. And it's okay. Exactly. And being learning to be heal and be okay with who we are ourselves mm -hmm. so we can just bring it mm -hmm. to the tribe. Mm -hmm. And and they're going to welcome us when they realize we're radiating love, whoever, whatever we're into, whoever we are personally, you're a love being. You're in our tribe. That's right. So beautiful stuff, Jay. We really admire you and respect you and we appreciate what you're contributing to the human family to the collective consciousness and the and the spirit of us all you know you're you're raising the whole vibration yeah. everywhere you go and and we just need all the more of these to just keep resonating out and rippling out so just let me talk about that for just a second yeah, so this is something that makes me come alive so i'm an engineer so my undergrad is in chemical engineering i have a master's in petroleum engineering i have a diploma in computer science worked in this tech world, worked in Silicon Valley for a number of years. In the midst of all of this pursuit and accumulating a lot of stuff and reputation, I was completely empty. Now the work that you just heard me speak about has been the most fulfilling phase of my life. It is um, what I believe that I've been put on this earth to do and it has been the least financially rewarding but it doesn't matter. I'm the most happy, I'm the most um, healthy that I've ever been and I have some of the greatest friends because of the work and because how we connect and I just am not doing it because I'm trying to you know look good or uh, say something that you know makes me look cool or something like that. it's really I think it's my core that is being nourished first when I go out to do so I invite all of you as you listen to this to ask you, ask yourself, what nourishes your soul? Don't worry about it. If money was not an objective, what would be the thing that would make you the most fulfilled? Do that and you will realize how the universe conspires to make that viable, to take care of your needs. So, yeah, I'm very happy to be partnering with you all. I'm, so this is really... I'm just grateful that you guys are all there to support what I think is going to be a beautiful mosaic of the pieces needed to complete that love-filled world. Oh, 
Bring it on, bring it on. I've always <laughs> said one of the great, almost fringe benefits of volunteering for things is you get to hang out with other people who have the spirit of volunteerism. Right. And now we're doing that even on the higher level. Now we're dealing with people who have devoted their lives to spreading the love message, spreading the message of conscious evolution, awakening and possibility, and to inspire us to do whatever it's gonna take to Build the muscle for living a new way, right. right? And I just realized a couple of days ago that, you know, what is this work that we're doing? If you want to win a bodybuilding competition, you're probably going to have to pump some iron. Mm -hmm. If you're going to play, if you want to play the first violin in the symphony, you're going to have to spend some time with a bow in your hand, mm -hmm. right? And so if you want to get good at the practice of mindfulness, uh, consciously evolving yourself, arriving in the love paradigm frame of mind for your perspective on the world and life and everything you perceive, there is some work to do. That's and right. this is the work we're talking about. And it, yeah. it, there are so many ways to access it and we don't need to necessarily get into all the tools in this video. Everything at Soul is about all the different ways we can access this and, and help ourselves and our tribe evolve. And so bring it on, keep doing what you're doing. This is, these are the people around whom we clearly needed to surround ourselves so that we can continue to grow the energy and the movements Absolutely. for change, for big change, big, deep change, fundamental right. change. Right, so, so to Evan's point, I just want to emphasize that in neuroplasticity, so they talk about the brain constantly rewiring yourself. So no matter what your past mm. has been like, no matter what experiences, what your childhood has been, what environment you grew up in, today, you have the choice and from the choice that you make, the actions that follow the choice, you are putting a completely new, maybe, neural pathway that when you repeat that for 21 days, at a minimum, you have created and built a habit that's going to serve you a lifetime. Well, here's to being served for a lifetime, <laughs> serving ourselves, serving one another, serving our, our human family and, and the precious planet that gave us our life and, and continues to sustain our life. So we always love to wrap with a hug and we're going to have our first on the deck sofa <laughs> hug across here. Jay, beautiful man. Thank you, Much Evan. gratitude. We'll get an update from you again sometime when you're passing through here in Northern California. Definitely. <laughs> I know you're going to be all over the world and lucky, lucky kids and parents who get to interface with you and, and immerse themselves in your work. Thank it's you. great work. Thank you. Thank you for doing what you're doing. I hope I'll be looking forward to coming back and seeing you again. Of course. And we'll see you next time on Soul Listens. Be sure and subscribe, like and follow on social media and go to our website, please, right now, souldocumentary.love. Yes, that's right. It's dot love. We got that. Give us your email address because we are going to keep in touch with you and we share a lot of things through email that don't go out anywhere else. So we would love to have you in the Soul Tribe and we'll see you real soon.